Let's continue practicing multiplying a mixed number by a mixed number. We're gonna do our practice page C60. Why doesn't Orgo eat cabbage, corn, chicken, clams, cake, or celery? Hopefully you've already done numbers one through 10, which was just practicing changing a mixed number to an improper fraction. Let's go ahead and do three examples from below, from 11 through 21. We're gonna do number 11, number 19, and number 20 together. So and I'm gonna do mine on a separate piece of paper because there is not enough room to do all of that work here. The biggest problem with these types of problems is trying to smoosh our problems together. And when we do that, we end up making mistakes. So here is number 11, two and a half times one and two fifths. So I rewrote my problem on a separate piece of paper and I labeled it number 11, made sure I wrote it correctly. Okay. We're gonna change our mixed number into an improper fraction. So two and a half is the same thing as two times two is four plus one is five. So we have five halves. And let's change one and two fifths. Five times one is five plus two is seven. Seven fifths. So I have five halves times seven fifths. And I can multiply straight across or I do notice that I have a five in my numerator and a five in my denominator. So I'm gonna simplify before I multiply. I'm gonna divide by five fifths, which is the same thing as dividing by one. We're using our identity property. Five divided by five is one, and five divided by five is one. Yes, that's nice and simple. Now I'm gonna multiply straight across. One times seven is seven. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so I have the answer of 7 halves. Let's go ahead and re-put that into a mixed number. 7 halves, how many times does 2 go into 7? It goes in 3 times. I'm going to take out 2 groups of 3. I'm taking out 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. And then my denominator stays the same. 7 halves is 3 and a half. So E, let's see what we can find. Answers for numbers one through 21, I'm looking for three and a half. Three, oh, three and a half right here is E. I'm gonna cross that off and I'm gonna write E next to number 11. And I'll go ahead and put that down here in my answer key. Number 11, E. I already went ahead and put the answers for one through 10, so that's what you see there. Let's go ahead and do number 19. 19, again, I'm gonna relabel it on a separate piece of paper. Here's 19, four and one twelfth times one and one seventh. Four and a twelfth times one and one seventh. Let's go ahead and solve that. Change our mixed number to an improper fraction. 12 times four is 48, plus one is 49. So 49 twelfths times seven times one is seven plus one is eight. We have eight sevenths. So we have 49 twelfths times eight sevenths. Ooh, I do not wanna do 49 times eight and 12 times seven, that would be icky. But I do notice a couple things. I have 49 and seven and those play nicely together. I'm gonna divide by seven sevenths. 49 divided by seven is seven. Seven divided by seven is one. Ooh, I really like that. Um, I could multiply straight across here because I have much smaller numbers, but I'm gonna go one step further. I notice the eight and the 12, they play nicely together. I could divide them both by two, but they have a bigger common factor of four. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide by four fourths. Remember, we're still dividing by one. We're using our identity property. Eight divided by four is two. 12 divided by four is three. Now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply straight across. Seven times two is 14. Three times one is three. You see why it's so important to stay nice and neat with this? Because there's a lot of places where we could get messed up 
just by messy handwriting. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify 14 thirds. How many times does three go into 14? Let's see, it goes in four whole times. That brings us up to 12. I'm gonna remove 12 away from 14. That gives me two leftovers. And then my denominator stays the same as three. Four and two thirds. All right, I'm looking for, and I could go ahead and write four and two thirds up in there just so I don't lose it. Let's go ahead and look on my answer key. I'm looking for four and two thirds. Oh, here we go, F. So I'm gonna go down and I'm 19 is F. There's my 19. There we go. Let's go ahead and do one last problem together. Let's go ahead and do number 20. Ooh, number 20, that's a little bit long. I have three numbers, but I'm still gonna do the exact same thing and just be nice and neat. So number 20, I'm gonna rewrite it on a separate piece of paper. Three and one eighth times one and three fifths times two and one half. Okay, let's change them into uh, mix, uh, improper fraction. Eight times three is 24, plus one is 25. All right, so I changed each of my mixed numbers into improper fractions. I could multiply straight across, ooh, but I'm gonna see if I can simplify first to make my life easier. Do you see anything in your numerator and denominator that play nicely together? Let's see, the first one that popped out to me was the fives. So I'll go ahead and deal with my fives first. It doesn't matter what order you do them, but as long as you do them. I'm gonna divide by five fifths, because that's the same as dividing by one. Five divided by five is one. Five divided by five is one. Whew, took care of those fives, that's awesome. Oh, I also see these eights, eight in the numerator, eight in the denominator. I'm gonna divide by eight eighths, still dividing by one. Eight divided by eight is one. Eight divided by eight is one. And I think that's pretty much all I see, but my numbers are so small, I'm just gonna go ahead and multiply straight across anyway. 25 times one times one is 25. 1 times 1 times 2 is 2. I have 25 halves. Let's go ahead and change that into a mixed number. 2 goes into 25 12 times. 2 times 12 is 24, so let's take out 24 out of 25. That is 1 left over, and our denominator stays the same, 12 and a half. 25 halves is 12 and a half. There we go. So we have part of a answer to our question written down. Go ahead and finish practicing 11 through 21 and see if you can come up with the answer to why doesn't Orgo eat cabbage, corn, chicken, clams, cake, or celery?